Okay, so so far we're looking at a derivative to this point. We kind of did the limit definition and we think of it basically as the slope of the tangent line drawn to a curve at a point. I do want to remind you that a slope is a rate of change. So a derivative also is a rate of change. We're not going to really get into that aspect of it yet, but I do like to just always remind you of that. A slope is a rate of change, therefore a derivative is a rate of change. Um, so what we're going to look at now is we're going to look at this graph of, uh, do we have the equation of this function? Uh, no, we don't, but we have the graph of the function. We are going to draw the tangent line at the given x value and estimate the derivative. So at negative 7, we're at this point here, and we're going to draw the tangent line with a ruler. I'm going to try out a ruler on an iPad. Eh, not bad. Um, and we're going to estimate that slope. So it looks like it kind of crosses a nice corner point there. So if I go up one, two, three, four, and over one, it looks like that that slope is about four. So rise over one is four. So I'm going to say the derivative at negative seven is about four. Now they're asking us, is the function itself increasing, decreasing, or a relative max or a minimum at this x value? So I'm going to erase the tangent line now just so I can draw on this. They're asking about the function as I go through that point from left to right. Is it increasing or is it decreasing? In this case, it's increasing. We do, they want us to write the equation of the tangent line at that value of x. So that tangent line I drew and then erased, we want the equation of the line. Well, remember that the point of tangency is the first thing we need. Well, we have the point here. It looks like it's uh, negative 7 and then down 3. So negative 3 is our point of tangency. The slope of the tangent line, we estimated to be 4. So then that means our equation is going to be y plus 3 equals 4 times x plus 7. All right, so now an x value of negative 6. We're going to draw, again, this tangent line. Let's see if I can do a better job here with the ruler. Not bad. It looks like... It was going to cross, or it crosses kind of right there at that point. So it looks like this will have a slope of going up one, two, rise of two, and a run of one. So it looks like the derivative at negative six, which is our slope of our tangent line, we're going to say is about two. The function at this point is increasing. So now our point of tangency is at negative 6. What's the y value at that point? 0. Our slope of the tangent line was about 2. So when we write our equation of our tangent line, we're going to get y minus 0 equals 2 times x plus 6. I don't have to show the minus 0 part. Uh, at negative 4, estimation of the derivative. If I draw the tangent line there, it looks like it has a slope of 0. Is the function increasing or decreasing as I go from left to right there through that point? It'll go in that direction. Actually, it's doing neither. It was increasing before that point and then it's decreasing after that point so when it changes from increasing to decreasing we call that a relative maximum you're going to pause the video here and complete the rest of these the what i just did for the rest of these you got to do the tangent line or i'll do sorry i'll do the slope of the tangent line for this one with you because it's a little weird with the slope of zero um so we'll start with the point of tangency Um, <clears throat> and that's going to be at negative 4. What was our y value? It looks like 2. 
then the slope of the tangent line was zero. So I know that a line with a zero slope or a slope of zero is a horizontal line and it just has the, equa the equation y equals a number, whatever the y value was. Okay, you could write it out, uh, you know, you could say y minus two equals zero times x plus four, but then zero times this stuff is just gonna be zero, so it would be y minus two equals zero. You'd add two to both sides and you get y equals two. So you're gonna pause it here, you're gonna finish this table and you'll I'll have the answers when you come back. Welcome back. So here are the answers. You can pause again and take a second here to check your work and see if you got them right. Okay, so uh, now if you if you did make any mistakes or you disagree with something here, that's something we could talk about in class. You can uh, bring that question up and we can talk about how I got something. Um, so what we're gonna note is in, in the next page, I'm gonna ask you to note some stuff, but let's just start talking about it now. Um, we are going to note that Whenever the function's increasing, we see that's a bad highlighted choice. Let's try a white. That's better. Whenever the function's increasing, what do we notice about the derivative? Here's another increasing. Whenever the function's decreasing, let's see if that's any different. That looks exactly the same. I guess that looks different enough. What do we notice about the derivative? So let's start with that. Based on what you observed on the table, what inferences can you make about the value of the derivative and the behavior of the graph of the function? So let's say this, number one, this is one thing we can say. If the derivative at a certain value a is bigger than zero, that's a fancy way of saying positive, then the graph of f of x is increasing at x equals a. So if the derivative is positive, f of x is increasing. That's the connection. Okay? And vice versa. If the derivative at a certain x value is less than 0, that means negative, then the graph of f of x is decreasing. at x equals a. So if f prime of a or the derivative is negative, then f of x is decreasing. So we can make conclusions about f if we know the derivative. So it's the, der it's the connection between the derivative and a function or a function and its derivative. And this is an if and only if statement. So it goes both ways. I can take the converse and it can be true. It's a biconditional statement. So if I know f is increasing, then I know the derivative is positive. And if I know the derivative is positive, then I know f is increasing. That leaves one more scenario. What if the derivative at a certain x value is equal to zero, neither positive nor negative? Then the graph is neither, po is neither increasing nor decreasing. So we'll say then f of x has a relative or local, you'll hear both of those words. Um, it means in its area. A relative max or a relative min. At x equals a. Now the question becomes, when the derivative is zero, how do we know if we have a maximum or a minimum? Well, it depends on what it was just before that x value and just after. What I mean is this. If we move from left to right on the function, I'm gonna erase some of this stuff. At a maximum, right here, 
as I move from left to right, leading up to the maximum, where the derivative will be zero, by the way, the function will be increasing. That's at a maximum. At a minimum, when we're coming up from the left towards the minimum, where the derivative is also zero, we need a way to determine, is it a max or a min? Because we know when the derivative is zero, it's one or the other. Notice that before a maximum, the function will be increasing. When the function, when f of x is bigger, oh sorry, is increasing, f prime of x is bigger than zero. So I know that before a local maximum leading up to it, if you're looking at f of x, it's increasing. If you're looking at the derivative of x, it's gonna be positive. Then at just after a maximum, so as you're leaving the maximum, the point's just on the other side. If it's a maximum, we know that f of x will be decreasing. Yeah, I'll stay with that color. And if it's the derivative we're talking about, we know that the derivative will be less than zero or negative. If it's a minimum, We're going to say before leading up to the relative minimum, f of x is decreasing first, or f prime of x, the derivative, is negative. On the other side of the minimum, f of x is increasing, or if we're talking about the derivative, f prime of x is bigger than zero or positive. So we talk about the derivative changing at a maximum, right? So Whenever the derivative is zero, okay, so whenever the slope of the tangent line is zero, you don't know if you have a maximum or a minimum. You have to look as you move from left to right, if the derivative changes from positive to negative, then you have a maximum. If the derivative changes from negative to positive, then you have a minimum. So that's how you can tell if it's a maximum or a minimum. So we're gonna just sort of add that on here. I'm gonna do it in white. So if the derivative is zero, you know it's either a max or a min. Um, for a maximum, for a relative maximum, um, let's see, f prime of x, the derivative changes from positive To negative and I'll just say uh, for and for a relative min f prime of x changes from negative to positive I'm running out of room so I'll abbreviate Okay, so that's kind of what we figure out from this. That's the kind of key point here. We can talk about the function just knowing something about its derivative. If I know the derivative is positive, I could say the function is increasing. That's where I like to think of rate of change, but uh, I'm not gonna get into that now because that's for a later date. I'll keep the video as short as possible. Okay, so now we're gonna do the same thing we did before from the graph. We're gonna estimate the derivative. We're gonna decide if the functions increasing, decreasing has a relative max or a relative min. And we're going to then write the equation tangent, the equation of the tangent line at this value of x. So how do we estimate the derivative at zero on a table? To do it on a table, if I wanna know the derivative at zero, I'm actually gonna take whatever information I have, the data point I have before it, and the data point I have after it. And I'm gonna do the slope between those two lines and that'll be an estimate of the slope of the tangent line. So my estimation of the derivative, which remember is slope of the tangent line, my estimate is really the slope of a secant line. Right, if I take the two points and do slope with those, that means I'm hitting the curve twice and I'm gonna use that as an estimate, okay? so. Um, that's kind of stated above in these words here. Numerically, the value of the derivative point can be estimated by finding the slope of the secant line. If 
I gave you a graph just to help with this, at zero, maybe uh, the function's doing this, right? Um, it's uh, This function's actually not doing that, but whatever. At zero, if the function's doing that, if I want to estimate the slope of that tangent line, what I can really do is pick a point on either side, draw the secant line, take that derivative, and that'll be a decent estimate. So that's what we're going to do here. So at zero, we got to do the slope to do the derivative at zero to estimate it. That's why I'm going to put, and it is approximately, we're going to say it's two minus negative three. It's going to be the y minus the y over the x minus the x. So it's going to be about negative five fourths. Now, how will I know if the function at zero is increasing or decreasing? It goes back to these statements. If the derivative is positive, then f is increasing. So what do we have here? Our derivative is negative, so that means the function must be decreasing. This is a very important connection, right? When, the when we know something about the derivative, we know something about the derivative, we can make a statement about f. So we know information about f prime. We can make a conclusion about f. That's important. That was supposed to be a little star. Okay. Now let's do the equation of tangent line at this value. So the point of tangency is actually, remember, this is the point we're doing. So it's 0, 1. And then the slope of the tangent line was estimated to be negative 5 fourths. So the equation of the tangent line will be y minus 1 equals negative 5 fourths x. I could write x minus 0, but not needed. All right. Uh, you're going to, I'll do one more with you. And then you're going to do the rest on your own. So now we're going to, I'm going to switch over. Damn. Now we're going to look for an estimate at an x value of 1. So I'm going to do the secant line on the two points on either side of that point. So I'm going to say the derivative at 1 is going to be estimated by the slope of the secant line. 0 minus 4, oh, sorry, that's the x's on top. I'm going to do the y's on top. So I'm going to go 1 minus 0, y minus y, over 0 minus 4, x minus x. So our estimate is going to be negative 1 fourth. Because our derivative is negative, the function will be decreasing. When f prime is negative, f of x is decreasing. Our point of tangency is 1, negative 3. Our slope of the tangent line was estimated at negative 1 fourth. So we can write the equation of the tangent line as y plus 3 equals negative 1 fourth x minus 1. You're going to pause the video and do the next two. Okay, welcome back. You can pause the video here again and just see if your answers are correct. Okay, so we're now going to move on to our next kind of skill. The graph given here is a picture of g of x. They want us to talk about the derivative. So if I know g, I can say stuff about g prime. So what would I know about g? If I know g is increasing, then I know g prime is positive. If, I, if g is decreasing, then I know g prime is negative. If g has a max or a min, then I know that g prime is equal to zero. So let's go through this. They want us to say the intervals where g prime of x is less than zero. So we're going to say g prime of x is less than zero. On our quizzes and tests, you guys are starting to get better at kind of restating what they want and spelling things out. Here's the restatement, right? They're saying, tell me where the intervals uh, the intervals where g prime of x is zero. I start off by saying, well, g prime of x, right, is less than zero. You got to restate what they're asking. You don't just start writing stuff. So um, g prime of x is less than zero on the interval negative four to negative two. Why is that? What's happening from negative four on this x interval? What's happening to negative two? What's the function doing as I move from left to right on that interval? f of x is decreasing. 
So I know wherever f of x is decreasing, the derivative must be negative. Are there any other spots where it's decreasing? Yeah, it's decreasing again on this part of the graph. So that's from an interval of 1 to it's unbounded. It just keeps going down forever, infinity. So I'm going to say union. That's how I add or join another set from 1 to infinity because the graph of g of x is decreasing. You need to write these statements out. You need to explain why. You need to restate the question, answer it, right, and then state why. That's what we need to continue to improve at. Okay, so I said a lot of stuff, but notice I wrote it. I don't assume the reader knows it. So now they want to know where is the derivative or where is g prime of x positive? So now I'm looking on the graph. Oops, I already have, it's already white. Where is the function increasing? Well, it starts increasing right from the beginning and stops there. So it just kind of comes from on this interval up until negative 4. So I'm going to say that g prime of x is bigger than 0. There's my restatement. And then I'm going to tell them on which intervals. Negative infinity to negative 4. Notice I'm not including the 4. What's happening at 4? Is the function increasing or is it decreasing? Actually, it's doing neither. So that's why the derivative there is neither positive nor negative. There's only one number that's neither positive nor negative. That number is 0. When the derivative is 0, i.e. neither positive nor negative, the function is neither increasing nor decreasing. So this is an open interval because I cannot say that the function you know, is decreasing or the derivative is negative or increase, right? At a max or a min, I don't include it. Union, where else is the function increasing? On this part of the graph. So that goes from negative 2 to 1. I know I'm drawing these braces, which mean close, but I'm just trying to show you the interval from negative 2 to 1. So I restated their question, I answered it, and now I'm going to explain why I know that. Because the graph of g of x is increasing. Now they want to know the values of x where the derivative is equal to 0. Where is the slope of the tangent line 0? At any maximums? At a maximum or a minimum. There's all my derivatives that have a slope, my tangent lines that have a slope of 0. So we're going to say g prime of x is equal to 0. It's not on an interval. It's at specific x values when x equals negative 4, negative 2, and 1. Right? It's at this x value, negative 2, and also 1. Because g of x has a relative maximum <clears throat> or a relative minimum. Now we're going to look at, we've talked a lot about the tangent line. Let's look at something called the normal line. If you're doing physics or you've taken physics, you'll kind of already know what normal means. So on the right, we have a graph here uh, of a function. Draw the tangent line to the graph of f of x at x equals 1. So there's the point of tangency. Let's bust out the ruler and try to get a nice tangent line here. All right, there's our tangent line. So it says draw the tangent line, then estimate the value of the derivative at 1. Derivative means slope of the tangent line. So I go. it looks like I'm going up 2 and over 1. So uh, left 1. Or I can say down 2 and right 1. Right? So it looks like the slope is negative 2. 
Um, that's an estimate I should probably use. Okay. Is approximately. Find the equation of the tangent line to the graph at x equals 1. So now we want to do the equation of the tangent line. Well, we know that the point of tangency is 1. Uh, looks like 2. I'll go 1, 2, yep. And then the slope of the tangent line is about negative 2. So our equation of the tangent line is y minus 2 equals negative 2 times x minus 1. A normal line is a line that is perpendicular. That's what normal means. A lot of times in physics, again, you're talking about a normal force. And we'll talk more about this in class. But the normal line is a line that's perpendicular to the tangent line at the point of tangency. Draw this line. So first, I'm going to draw a line that's perpendicular to my tangent line. with the ruler. There's my normal line. It's perpendicular to the tangent line. Um, draw this and find the equation of the normal line. So now I know the point of tangency is the same. 1, 2. But now the normal line, the slope of the normal line So I'll call it S-O-N-L, the slope of the normal line. Since it's perpendicular to the tangent line, we know that little trick about it's an opposite reciprocal. So if the slope of my tangent line is negative 2 over 1, the reciprocal of that is 1 over negative 2. And then opposite means if it's negative, make it positive. So it now becomes a positive 1 half. So that's the slope of the normal line. They want the equation of the normal line to be y minus 2 equals one half times x minus one. It's gonna have the same point because it goes through the same point of tangency. So these parts are gonna match because it's going through the same point, but notice the slope is now the opposite reciprocal. Okay, now we're gonna do something a little bit trickier. Uh, this graph is not the graph of h. It's the graph of h prime. So up above here, we worked off the graph of g and we made statements about g prime. Now, if we're given the derivative h prime, can we make statements about h? So they want to know when is h increasing, the function h. Well, based off of h prime, we know that when the derivative is positive, the function h will be increasing. So where is the derivative positive? For what intervals does the derivative stay above the x-axis? Those are all positive y values. Remember, h prime of x is on the graph on the y-axis now, if we're looking at a graph of a derivative. So all of these y values up here are positive, which means all the derivatives are positive. This means on the graph, on the graph of h, at the x value negative 1, the slope of the tangent line would be 5. That's what that means. On this graph, it's just a y value of 5 because that's the derivative. The, the y is the derivative. So these are all the spots where my derivative is bigger than 0 or positive. It also occurs here. So now we want to write those as intervals from negative 2 to 1. So the intervals where h of x is increasing. So, of course, let me move my ruler. We've got a restatement of the problem. h of x is increasing. on the interval negative 2 to 1. And union again from 3 to infinity. Because then it's increasing again here from 3 on. H of x is increasing on that. So I restated. I gave the answer because h prime of x is positive or in other words, above, that's how we can easily see on a graph, above the x-axis. That's how I know they're all positive. So we can just leave it at that. The intervals on which h of x is decreasing, well, those will be wherever the derivative is negative. All my y values are negative here. And remember, on this graph, y values are really the derivative. 
and it's below the axis here and here. So here's my intervals on this part all the way up to negative two. So I'm going to say, I'll write it in green even though on the picture I'm doing gold. I'm going to say h of x is decreasing. There's my restatement of the question or the directive on the intervals. Now I answer it from negative infinity to negative two. That's this part. And then again, from now we're looking at this part from an x value of one to three, because h prime of x is less than zero or below, or also negative is what we're talking about, right? But below the x axis. When given the graph, you're just looking for when the derivative is above the x axis, x -axis or when it's below. The values of x were h of x has a relative maximum. So where does F have a relative max? I'm going to erase this stuff. A F has a relative maximum. Let's come all the way back up here. When the derivative is equal to zero, then F has a relative max or a relative min. Remember, wherever the slope of the tangent line is zero. Where is the derivative zero? Keeping in mind that Y on this graph represents the derivative. The derivative is zero there, the derivative is zero there, and the derivative is zero there. These are just points, they're not intervals for finding maxes and mins. The question is, how do I know which one's a maximum and which one's a minimum? Well, remember we talked about leading up to the derivative being zero. If the derivative is negative and then switches to positive afterwards, right? then that means the function was decreasing and then increasing. If the derivative is negative first, the function's going down, then it switches to a positive, the function turns around and goes back up. That means we would have a minimum there. So that's how I can tell. The derivative switches from, um, let me do this here. Being below the axis means my, oh, it's an h. h prime of x is negative. And then it switches to h prime of x is positive. So they want which ones? Relative maximums. So that would not be a case where that's a maximum. That's a minimum if it switches from negative to positive. We want this other one here where it starts off leading up to it. The derivative is positive and then switches over to the derivative being negative. At that x value... The derivative is zero. Oh, I should have written that in, sorry. H prime of x here is negative. So here we have a switch where the derivative switches from positive to negative, which means the function was going up because the derivative is positive, then it goes down because the derivative switches to negative, so we would have a maximum there. So at one, we have a maximum. So we're gonna, we're gonna say H of x, the restatement, has a relative maximum at the x value. Um, do they just want the x? Yeah, just the values of x. Uh, at an x value of 1, it was, yeah. Because h prime of x is 0, or I could say h prime of 1 is 0, and I probably should say h prime of 1 because that's where it is 0. And h prime of x changes. So you've got to have those, both of those things happening to call it a maximum from positive to negative. Based on that, see if you can find the values of x where there is a relative minimum. Okay, so here's the answer for that guy. So you can check that. Pause it if you like. We're going to move on to the next one. Now, they're telling us about H. Remember, we're given the graph of H prime here. If H of negative 1 equals 1 half, so they're telling us a point on H, really. Negative 1, 1 half. What is the equation of the tangent line drawn to the graph of h at x equals one at x equals negative one? 
So at this point, this is our point of tangency because they said the tangent line drawn at that point. Um, so now we just need the slope of the tangent line. Well, that's what the derivative is, right? So let's look at our graph. When x is negative 1, we're right here. What does it say our derivative is? The y value on that point is 5. That means, remember, that the y is h prime, is the derivative, is the slope of the tangent line. So now I can write the equation of that line. y minus 1 half equals 5 times x plus 1. So now they say, what if h of 2 is negative 3? So they're telling us a point of tangency again on the graph. And then they're saying, what's the equation of the normal line at x equals 2? So now I go on to my graph of my derivative. We're looking at 2, which we see the slope of the tangent line. The derivative is negative 2. So the slope of the tangent line is negative 2. They want, the, um, they want the graph of the normal line. So the slope of the normal line will be the opposite reciprocal of that which is 1 half. So now we can write the equation y plus 3 equals 1 half times x minus 2.